It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com Two Dialogues with Dan, heard on Rockland World Radio every Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to check out the archives off the program page on the menu bar. Now the host of Dialogues with Dan, Mr. Dan Wintheim. Thanks, Richard. Hi, everyone. I have a repeat guest I spoke to maybe a year and a half ago, two years. I'm speaking with Christopher Thiessen from Bear Hill, Inc. I'd like to introduce Chris Thiessen. Hi, Chris. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me back oh, again. Excellent to see you. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Oh. Hello, everybody out there. Yeah, Chris. Maybe you could start by talking about your work with photography and multimedia and maybe touch on your background? Yeah, interesting question. Wasn't prepared for that, but thanks oh. for asking. Yeah, I guess uh, my love of photography started back in the late 60s, early 70s, when I was uh, playing in a jazz band in high school. We had taken a trip over to Ireland, and I began to take some pictures, and when I brought those home, everybody was remarking how nice they were, you know, the composition. Uh, and I began to explore those avenues, and of course, as things went on, I began to really develop an interest in it. I think the the artist background has been in the family uh, all my life, uh, aunts, uncles, my kid brother is a world-renowned artist. But uh, I appreciate it. I always liked the challenge of uh, photographing wildlife and, and uh, I guess, mountains. Uh, you know, I just, I love it. I enjoy it, and I like to capture those images to bring them to folks who ordinarily wouldn't have the abilities to be in the places that I've been. Up in the mountains, down on the slippery slopes of the, the rivers and places of that nature. Uh, so I found it uh, by sharing those uh, special areas uh, that I had been uh, was really uh, enlightening for me because it was helping others and I was beginning to get some compliments. So. Uh, continue to work on some books. Uh, I've been published numerous times. I've got a, a coffee table book out there now. Uh, actually, it was a limited edition, uh, but we're going to we're going to start uh, on the second one. We've got three in in the works right now. Oh, excellent! Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so, your work involving someone who might be disabled or injured or a wounded war wounded warrior. I know you have involvement in that area. Yes, that's my passion, my love, my hobby, my mistress, if you will. Uh, as you know, uh, after many operations, too many to go into, uh, I had some life-altering, like yourself, Dan, life-altering injuries. And uh, when I got out of Helen Hayes, I swore that I was gonna make every second of this life uh, count. I felt as though I'd been given a second chance at it. Uh, they had promised me that I stood a very good chance of living the rest of my life in a wheelchair due to my spinal injuries, but uh, here I am, and I got here under my own volition. So uh, as long as I can do that, I said, you know, I will continue to help. I had met a bunch of folks over there, uh, some veterans as well, and I realized uh, there are so many different aspects to these injuries that a lot of folks can't either identify or, or uh, come to grips with. You know, you get that feeling of being alone out there. You have a tendency to sit on a pity pot. You feel sorry sure. for yourself. Look at the, sh the, the, the lousy hand that life has dealt me. And I almost said that word, but not here. Not tonight, oh. folks. <laughs> 
Yes. But, I, you know, in, instead of focusing on all of these negativities and, and, and the, uh, the bad things that had gone on, I recognized that the only way to, you know, get out of this uh, morose, uh, this, this horrible feeling, uh, this, these dark places, by the way, which are good places to be at times because we do learn from, hopefully. Yes. But we recognize we can't live our lives in that pain and the dark in the misery. We've got to move on. And it was through photography, through my, my working uh, with others. Uh, but more importantly, when I began to work with the Wounded Warrior Program, we took a bunch of guys out fishing, and I'll never forget those experiences, uh, which continue to this day because it, it inspires me. You see folks in a lot worse shape. You know, IEDs that have just taken limbs off and shrapnel in their face. They've lost their sight, part of their hearing. I mean, just horrible, just horrible things. Yes. And a lot of these guys just turn to you and they smile and they say, you know, I can't thank you enough. I haven't done this since I was a child. I had a blast today. And they begin to tell you their story. And what you realize is all they were looking for is somebody to listen. And I think that's, that's really where, you know, the heart needs to be on purely human terms. Definitely. Yeah. So you attribute getting better or helping others by maybe you could list some areas like helping others makes one better. Maybe. Paying it forward, we've heard that term utilized many yes. times. For me, it's it's always been more of a spiritual thing when I'm able to share with another human being, the, the, uh, the rivers, the valleys, the gorges, uh, the mountains that I've enjoyed throughout my life, either through photography or bringing them there, showing them a different skill set. It's, uh, we had a guy who was a plumber and he, like myself, had broken his back. He, uh, a hell of a nice guy, we became friends. And I was developing Bear Hill at the time. And I said, you know, here is something that you could do I see he had just been married a few years before, had a baby daughter, and it was, you know, life was wonderful until it broke his back. And he was so scared because in his mind, life had ended. He couldn't do anything. So it was a matter of showing him that, wait a minute, you know, okay, you may not be able to get on your knees again. You may not be able to crawl underneath or get in the attics, but there are other things that you can learn how to do. And you don't need to go crazy over that. The important thing is to have significant others that are there to help walk you through or to help support you in a way. I'm not talking about financially, but morally uh, yes. and, and emotionally. It helps. It really does. So you're saying that when something occurs, you could still go back and like re recreate your life. It might not be the way you did it then, but find another way. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, Dan, I, like you have. Uh, I was working with a client up in Helen Hayes. Uh, I'm scrambling for his name right now. His name was also Dan. Uh, he was a, a coach and a high school teacher in Florida. He had a stroke at a very early age in his life. I believe he was early 30s. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, of course, his wife left him. He had just had twins. Uh, really devastating stuff. But he had learned all of a sudden, you know, while one, my mother used to say, when one door closes, another one opens. Yes. For him, it was, you know, more in, in, in his own, literally, figuratively, uh, at the same time, in his brain. While he could no longer physically do what he used to do to earn a living, uh, through the work with the folks up at Helen Hayes, uh, he began to take pictures just as a physical therapy thing. And he began to realize, and folks are buying his books, they're buying his cards today. He's starting a new life for himself. Oh, amazing. So it's really, it's like a, a way of thinking yes. that you have to expand your mind well i i think it's possibility absolutely absolutely yes. and it's you know it's understanding what the issues are yes accepting your limitations and accepting the fact that there there are other things out there accepting the fact that life is not perfect never will be 
we're not perfect, never will be. Yes. And then third, to realize that this is not all there is. Yes. So the next chapters, and I've shared with you before, it's, you know, I give a lot of the guys an open book. And I say, okay, you think it's the end of the book. You think it's the end of your life. Okay, metaphor. I said, but here's the book. And I said, that was just the first chapter here, guy. It's a blank page. Here's a pen. We give him the book and say, start writing the next chapter because this could be the best part of the damn book for you. Exactly. Yeah, could you speak about your groups? You have recreation groups. Yes. They go, there's fishing, there's hunting, is there? Yes. Could you talk about a little bit about that? Sure. Activities. Sure. And we do get flack on the hunting end of things. So we usually don't talk about those things. Oh. My, my secretary is a a vegan and she gets very upset. Oh. You know, all life is sacred. And I understand that. I respect that. Uh, but what we've been able to do, and it's because of the uh, the different companies that have sponsored us throughout our ventures that really dictates where we're going to go. Uh, the Rockland County Trappers Association, these guys are terrific. Steve Kafka, some of the folks over there, wonderful individuals. They've made uh, several uh, donations. And so in their honor, we take a group. Uh, this year will be, uh, we've already done one trip. That was last week. Uh, we took four guys out uh, and we brought them up to the Never Sink. And we absolutely, because I have some property up there. So I'm able to provide them some private water. Where is this? Uh, it's in Forestburg, New York. Oh. Uh, probably, eh, I want to say 20 minutes south of Monticello. Okay. Bordering on Orange and Sullivan County. Beautiful area. It's private. Oh, and uh, because of that access, I'm able to take them up there, spread them out a little bit, give them instructions, give them some tackle, and let them at it. And yes. basically everybody caught some fish and some folks the first time uh, on a fly rod, which was very exciting. And I gather Chris doesn't stock that pond. No, no, no. No, don't. no these are all wild. Oh, these are all yeah. wild trout. I know, I was joking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we just, uh, what was it? Uh, last year we took a, a whole crew out. Uh, again, everything was donated, the hotels yes. and so on. And we took uh, Mr. Winchell out. Uh, uh, I'm not going to give you the first name. Uh, and it was, a it was a little rough for him. He had just uh, gotten out of the hospital. He had had some, some sores and things. But he sucked it up. He was a trooper. We had uh, Joe Gadiz from uh, Havistraw and a few others. Uh, again, being all sponsored with a three-day trip. And we went up and we had all the, the turkey guides. By the way, folks, for those of you who are vegans, we didn't get anything. Huh. But... What we did get back was knowing that we've helped one another and they overcame several obstacles. And it, it's just wonderful. It's, it's, it's very enriching for me. See, that's, that's the thing. It allows me to get out of myself, forget about my issues, my problems, my aches, my pains, yes. and by helping others and realizing that, hey, they too can do it. I mean, Keith had said to me, he said, in an interview that we did with him, because we do that as part of the therapy, he said, you know, Chris, he said, the one thing I am so grateful for, he said, this is the first time I have sat on terra firma since my accident. He said, I forgot what Mother Earth feels like. I mean, it's things like that that just, oh, they yes. just juice me up and you realize, yeah, we are where we're supposed to be. Yes, I was asking about the, the variety of people who are welcome for these events. You mentioned wounded warriors. Yes. And folks from uh, Helen Hayes. And earlier we were talking, and you had asked me, uh, and basically the answer is this everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. We're yes. not exclusive to just one uh, type of uh, disability or ability. Yes. Uh, I've had able-bodied 80 year olds just simply wanted to go out for a stroll in the hills so this is men and women absolutely yeah i know i learned last time that fly fishing is great rehab for is it breast cancer yes yes exactly the motion that's right it's good for Breast cancer. Very good. Survivors. Ah, you've been doing your reading. Yes. Now. Yes. 
and don't do you do well, next to hunting. But how about ski- skiing? Well, I had to stop skiing personally. Will yes. if it, it depends. We'll sponsor trips for individuals. Uh, we have uh, one of my clients is up there. Uh, what is it? Uh, Orange County snowboards, uh, things like this. So we can and do set people up with those venues if this is something they'd like to do. Okay. Uh, you know, most outdoor sports we've uh, taken them out kayaking, canoeing. Uh, I have a boat. We'll take them out on the Hudson once in a while yes. uh, for the stripers. Uh, it all depends on how things are moving along yes. uh, and in which direction. It's it's time at this point. You know, it's time, it's money, obviously, but uh, how many volunteers do we have? How many folks can we rely upon? And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of issues up there in uh, the North Country being Stony Point uh, with the Sandy hitting us. And, sure. you know, we've had uh, a whole bag of issues to deal with up yeah, there. Yeah, before I ask my next que- question maybe how do you find access in the venues fishing boating how is the accessibility <laughs> accessibility very limited very limited too limited to say we are at a point where i'm satisfied we're far from that dan uh, DEC, New York State, NCON, some people call it. I know that they are willing to work with us. They're willing to work with anybody in trying to provide uh, more access. It's a matter of money for them. It's a matter of, oh, uh, it's a matter of, that's my phone, folks. Don't let it bother you. It's just a ringing. Oh, boy. It's not that's still, that's, yeah, exactly. Ben. That's the big problem. Never, folks, ever leave your phone on while you're in the middle of a radio show. All right. So that'll shut up in a minute. Uh, But, you know, in all honesty, uh, to get back to that question, uh, where the hell was I? This thing is annoying. I'm going to go shut it off. I was hoping somebody grab it for me. We do. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Yes, accessibility. I was up in the, uh, the commissioner's office two years ago talking about this. Uh, we had made a plea to them for uh, making accessibility uh, for individuals with disabilities, in particular our program. Uh, in the Catskills, there was a specific place that they had taken over, and uh, I had made application, and they had said, well, we don't discriminate against anybody, so you'd have to, if we would allow you to oversee the program, we would have to open it up to everybody. Right. So, in so by doing, they would destroy the very perfect place that we were just trying to have a low impact upon. So I couldn't go after that particular piece, but in return, one of the assistant commissioners came to me and said afterwards uh, that you know he would like for me to be able to negotiate with New York City DEP Uh, for some dock space. And he said, look, if we could get some new docks built on some of the reservoirs upstate, maybe, just maybe, we could uh, work something out on the other end. So again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. I think the state is willing to work with almost anybody. Uh, But for them, they're broke. It's, It's all about funding. So it falls, and look, government, shouldn't do it all they can't do it all so that's why programs like ours are trying to develop that very model where we work with the local governments the state governments to provide these types of things hey if you need a dock if you need you know a station or a place where we can get down to the river for people who who can't walk down a rocky path yes you know let's build it let's put it there but again, it all falls yeah. back to money. Not good what times for you, raising money. What do you think about, say, like tents with bunks? Like, that's not easily, you know, arranged. But there's ways you could maybe 
help someone tip the back wheelchair and push them up and oh there's there are so many ways and they've got some wonderful uh trying to remember the name of the company that does it but it looks like a little if you've ever been skiing you see those snow cats that go up the mountain with the instead of wheels they have uh, like treads on all four wheels so to speak yeah uh i forget the exact number is that similar to but they have like wheelchairs beach. like that is that similar to a beach well beach, beach i think it, yeah i know what you're talking about those those are just big balloon tires yeah. yeah this is this is similar but instead of tires it has tracks and they're rubberized, so they leave a low impact. And these things, virtually, it's like a four-wheel uh, ATV. They climb, they go over rocks. Uh, obviously, if your your uh, tipping point is reached, you can certainly tip over. But you know, I think it's it's making the outdoors a lot more accessible for individuals who can't walk. Yes, and that's wonderful. I, I think the technology has come a long way. Oh, now yes. it's a matter of getting it into the hands of the people who want to use it. Yes. Yeah, last time we spoke about more about Bear Hill. Right. Yes. Could you maybe talk about Bear Hill, where that started, where it's going, and what you're doing with the... with the... Well, with the programs that yeah. we've been yeah. working on, I, I understand what you're saying there, Dan. And uh, we had spoken for those of you uh, who are not familiar. We had spoken uh, over the past several months, years, in fact. Uh, we're involved in doing so many different things at times, and I've decided to slow it down a little bit and focus on just a few of these. We have the outdoor therapy program; it's running well. Uh, right now, what we're focusing on, we're still in negotiations with uh, North Rockland School District. Uh, we're trying to get a, a home base. Uh, it's come down to two or three different buildings. Uh, we're still in negotiations. Uh, it's a long process, and we hope to have it wrapped up. We were actually hoping to be in there uh, in the spring semester. One of the things we're going to be doing there is, is teaching uh, different crafts uh, from plumbing and electrical work to you know, uh, basic facility maintenance we had an automotive program uh, all slated but because time and bureaucracy I guess uh, we've had to uh, put that off to the side uh, so it, it, it's it, it all depends on uh, what they decide they, their needs are for the school district and I understand that. it's going to take time uh, another one we're working on is a musical program. Uh, Lawrence Hobgood, uh, Grammy, multiple Grammy Award-winning uh, piano player, Kurt Elling's partner and uh, writer, phenomenal uh, writer. Lawrence has agreed to work with us in coming up with a, uh, a new pedagogy, a musical pedagogy for uh, musical therapy for individuals. Because even on my ride down here, I was realizing that was one of the things that really helped me when I was in those dark spaces we spoke of earlier, to help elevate myself out of there. You know, listening to the Eagles or, you know, a Bob Dylan tune, some of the old Beatles songs. Yeah, I'm one of those old uh, reminiscent romantics, you know, but it, it, it does. It really works for me, and it, it elevates my spirit to the point where I can at least see a little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel. And I guess uh, last but not least is our farming endeavor up in Del High, which I'd uh, also mentioned, and I'll mention it again briefly. Uh, Steve McCarthy uh, is leading the, the way up there. We've got uh, Sylvia Welch, a wonderful grant writer uh, out down here in Piermont. Uh, by the way, if anybody needs her, she's, she's ours. Leave her alone. She's too busy. <laughs> uh, great lady, though. And we're working together. We've got, uh, Steve, Steve and I, we've got 200 acres up there right now. Uh, he's been uh, raising hops now for three years. So uh, all of the hops that we raise, he's been brewing his, his own beer. It's wonderful stuff, too. Uh, we started grapes this year, so we hope in a few years to start uh, crushing our own grapes for wine. Uh, and we've got approval for a brewery. Uh, we're trying to raise money for about eight different – well, we're going to start off with eight cabins uh, – 
And we're looking for investors at this point to help push oh, that along. Excellent. Yeah. I know you have that. Well, you've heard of Tim Farmer? Yes, yes. You know Tim Farmer? He's a well-known fisher, fisherman. I think he's, I forgot exactly where he's located. Yeah. But he's does TV about fishing yes. for the disabled. Correct. And Correct. hunting. And he's doing great things. Great things as well. I agree. I yes, agree. so how could people listening, if they're interested, how could they get involved in some of your adventures? That's a great question. Thanks for, thanks for giving me that opportunity. They can give me a call. I'll give them my personal uh, phone, and that would be area code 914-523-6648. Again, 914-523-6648. I would throw them over to bearhill.org, but we're under construction. We're trying to add a bunch of new elements to that right now. Uh, but uh, that should be coming back probably midsummer, I think. Again, time. <laughs> yes. Time, money. Exactly. I mean, you, def you definitely have desire. That's a fact. Right? That's a fact. So. And given that I've been very busy working with the SBA and uh, the governor's program of uh, New York Rising, uh, my boss, Tom Morley, over at uh, Rockland Community and uh, his team, we've been reaching out, trying to help all the businesses that were devastated by uh, Superstorm Sandy uh, this past fall. Yeah, talk about that. Uh, briefly, yes, I, I, I would love to, because yes. uh, if you know of anybody uh, that had a business that, uh, even if they lost power for two, three, four days and they had to throw out their groceries, whatever it may have been, they had to pay their staff, uh, they may be eligible for some grant monies, which is the first time in history yeah, that- That was me. Right. Right. Throw out so, a lot of well, things. there you go. Uh, but as a homeowner, that's that's comes under a different program. Oh. But there, there is there is yes. relief for that as well underneath. Oh. There's a, a very similar program, but yes. it's being handled by HUD. I understand, not the SBDC. We're specifically working with the local businesses in Rockland, Westchester, Putnam, and I think part of Dutchess. Yeah, what was that called? Yeah, the small business. PCA. PCA. Did uh, you say? No, no. S B S B as in boy, yes. S B D C, the Small Business Development Center. The long term is is it's New York State Small Business Development Center. So N Y S S B D C. Okay, we're located over in Rockland, uh, SUNY Rockland, that is, on the campus in Brucker Hall, and uh, you could also reach me there if you know anybody who needs help. Uh, we could certainly direct them. Again, uh, we're going to be working in uh, Haverstraw, out of the uh, Haverstraw Extension. Uh, we've been down in Piermont. We've had a presence since Sandy. Uh, and, uh, of course, Suffern. Now we've got two more opening up in Westchester as well. Uh, so if you know of anybody that is in need of help, please don't hesitate. Uh, name is Chris. Uh, feel free to call that number, or you can call the office at 845 three five six six zero six five again three five six six zero six five yeah that's great it's a great program yes and anyone interested in well you, i'm sorry you said the bear hell stuff yes is kind of put on the side for a while well, now that we're working heavily on the Sandy uh, relief effort, uh, you have to weigh your priorities. Yes. And right now, a lot of my neighbors are out of their homes. They've had to shutter their exactly. business. Uh, some of my neighbors are actually living up at the Stony Point Center uh, since October 31st. So uh, when I saw them on the sidewalk eating some Red Cross chicken, my heart dropped. And I said, my God, you know, this is, this is horrible. And we got to do something to help these individuals. Thank God, uh, you know, the, the government, the federal government is very slow to react. 
on this. Uh, we were promised a quicker action in, in this all, but uh, the governor was not satisfied with that, decided to step things up and is now offering 2% loans to businesses. And like I say, in certain cases, especially uh, fisheries and some of the towns like Piermont, uh, we've got uh, grants, grants of 50000 in some cases up to $100,000 that you don't have to pay back. So, hey, free money. So, where there's a will, there's a way. Amen. So just keep looking and you'll find it. That's right. And as Give me far, a call if you have any yes. questions, any doubts. And as far as your wounded warrior and fishing and camping and other activities, they could contact you. Please. Do you have anything planned? This well, we summer? yes, we do. We Besides have. Besides what? Last week. Yes. yes. Yes, we do. We have several trips planned. And uh, again, our sponsors were the uh, Steve Kafka and the, the crew from the uh, Rockland County uh, TA, and we are certainly going to utilize that to the best of our abilities, and we hope to take as many folks. And of course, our, our plans are to get some of the folks again out from Helen Hayes, and we get the folks out from uh, Montrose, and some of our good friends over there, I'd like to give them a shout out. Uh, you know, thanks guys, we appreciate it. So do you know anything like on the calendar? Yes, we have one trip planned for the end of June, and that will be up at Hessian Lake. Yes. Uh, that is the third Saturday in June, with Sunday being the rain date. That's one. We have uh, two others. One I'm, I'm still working on. I'm trying to get a, a saltwater fishing trip planned, and that will either take place in uh, uh, August or early September, and we'll be leaving out of Staten Island, hopefully. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, we have the, the folks have volunteered their time and their boat. So oh, it's super. just a matter of how many people can we get on board. Yes. That's always the question. And Literally. it's the logistics. On board. Getting folks, that's no right. Pun. Getting no everybody pun. down there and, and getting the, enough gear for everybody and yeah. so on. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'd like to thank Chris Thiesing for joining me on Dialogues. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Easy for me to say. <laughs> on Dialogues with Dan. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Dan. It's always a pleasure. Yes. I hope you have us back. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, everyone, Christopher Thiesing on Dialogues with Dan. Have a good week, everyone. Peace. Thanks, everybody. Not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio dot com.